Hi, third and fourth grade, uh, week eight. We are on to still lifes. Uh, we're going to look at an artist named Paul Cezanne as our inspiration for this lesson. If you remember, we did a lot of um, still life in the beginning of the year. Um, and Miss Furman set up a whole still life for you guys to work from when I was out. So just because you did it once doesn't mean that you have done it. Um, if you see how many paintings I'm going to show you of Cezanne, he practiced still lifes again and again and again. And when we practice stuff again and again, we get better. So um, if you remember, a still life is made up of objects that are inanimate, which is a big word. That means they do not move. They're not animated. They don't move. So, um, and most of the time they use things like fruit and pitchers or plates or knives or, and most of the time there's a lot of fabric in it because fabric is very hard to draw. So you get a lot of good experience trying to paint or draw fabric. A um, little bit about Paul Cezanne before we get started. He is um, a French artist. He um, painted in the late 1800s to the early 1900s. Um, he, was, he, he was always wanted to be an artist, but his father wanted him to be a lawyer. So he tried to go to law school and work in that world but it just did not fit with him so he ended up going to art school and studying at a, several different art schools and he ended up in paris um, where he met a whole bunch of different artists who were very famous as well um, but he never really felt like he fit in in paris so he, he ended up going back to the south of france where he was from and working alone a lot he was very isolated he liked to work alone and just um, be by himself with his art. So um, you're going to be like, why do I have to look at fruit again and draw it? And it's because the more you observe, the better you get. So um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you. Um, okay, let's start. So again, this lesson is on observation like we did with Georgia O'Keeffe. So we're going to be looking at objects and we're going to be trying to draw them as realistically as possible. But we're also going to use the style of Cezanne, which is the way that he painted, which is what makes his paintings all look like his work. So if you look here on this one, this pear, I believe it's a pear, almost looks like it's outlined with the darker line. Okay, and he does this with all of his work. He does it when he draws buildings or when he paints buildings or trees. And they're always kind of have a, a, an outline to them. The other thing about Cezanne is he looks for simple shapes um, while he is painting. So here are some straight lines. This almost looks like half a triangle. Um, here is a pear. And you know, we drew pears early in the year. And they kind of have this bulbous or this round shape to it that has like a point to it or a rounded point or a hill on top of it. So I want you to start looking at your objects that you're going to be drawing and just making them basic shapes. And again, here's his outline that you can see on this pear or apple. I'm just going to flip through these because I know you can go through them on your own. Um, here's the fabric, a pitcher. Okay, and do you see how he's adding shadows here? So it is important to add your shadows even on this little plate right here. It looks like the light is coming from this direction and it's casting the shadow over here and under here. When you do not draw shadows, your objects look like they are floating, just like if you don't draw them on a background or on a table, they look like they're floating. So this is his shadow here so again the light is coming from this way you can see the shadow actually it's probably coming from the ins like from our point of view almost over here because the shadow gets long back here from the glass uh i'm just going to flip through you can get up close and just draw or paint you're just drawing draw um certain things but this one is a really good one because you can see how he outlines part of it 
okay? Um, and that's what's going to make your drawings look like his style. Um, this is a short video about how he set up a still life and a little bit more about him. And here are the two demonstrations. This video I did for kindergarten. Um, I want your kindergarten through second grade and I want you to watch it because I just want you to watch it. You'll figure it out once you watch the whole thing. This was the one for you. And this has a lot of lessons on how to keep trying when you mess up because that's what Miss Flashier did. She messed up. So she had to go back to the drawing she did for kindergarten and add to it for you guys. So this is why I want you to watch this video first so you know where this drawing comes from. Um, and also I want you to understand that artists mess up all the time and it's hard to be creative when you need to be and sometimes you have days where you're creative and you can draw really well and sometimes you have days that you don't and on those days sometimes you just have to walk away and try it a different day um, we don't have that luxury in school when we're in class together because you have to work during class time but now that you're home working on this you can do it when you have time, when you feel creative, when you feel like you're going to make a great drawing or just want to try something. This is a really good time for you to work like an artist does, a professional artist does. So please try, make a drawing, take a picture, put it on Schoology for me. Um, if nothing else, answer the questions about Cezanne on Schoology and have fun. Keep creating, and I miss you guys.